Now, this can signify, this can signify results rather than purpose as it does in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 verse 12 and so forth. So it, it, the, thus it was a way of stating at once the divine command and the results and the experience. Look at chapter 2 in verse 2. Hosea chapter 2 in verse 2. It looks good. Plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredom out of her sight and her adulteress from between her breasts. Verse 5. For the mother hath played the harlot. She has conceived them, hath done shamelessly. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wood, my wool, and my flax, my oil, and my drink. Well, that still happens today, don't it? Mm -hmm. That Gomer, like Israel, left the security of her marriage and chased after other lovers. That's what Israel did. Mm -hmm. And that pattern of the care, uh, uh, marital fidelity, <coughs> at first, they at first embraced God, followed by a physical and spiritual prosperity, was exactly what Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2 would remind Israel in the latter times. I remember your youth when you went devotedly after me in the wilderness. Jeremiah 2, verse 2, there was a time that in the very beginning, Israel chose to follow after Christ, after God, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. Well, the days of the honeymoon in the wilderness. Secondly, the days of the honeymoon in the wilderness. That's the topic. Therefore, God will once more, Hosea chapter 2, verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14, You want to read that uh, bill, the bill, chapter 2, verse 16? Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. I don't know that God ever asked the prophets to scream <coughs> at the children of Israel. I don't know that any of them ever got up and got in their faces and screamed at them. Somehow, my voice goes high anyway. Or right here or there. My voice is how churches come down. But I don't know that any prophet that we hear scream at people. To get them to listen. All of us as parents and grandparents have experienced screaming at our kids. Holy cow! And the cow's not holy except in India. <laughs> but somehow we think screaming gets the attention of the child when it makes them back up and they can't hear what you're saying. I remember specifically the day that I decided this is Totally stupid for me to holler loud at my kids. They're not listening to me anyway. Until I started changing my voice and speaking in a tone like I am speaking now. Preaching is not screaming. You don't scream for <coughs> emphasis. We are talking about God's holy word. And God never screamed at Israel. He beat them to death. He beat them to death. He put them under severe punishment. He brought hell and fire and brimstone on them. But then he says in verse 14, God loves his unfaithful people. 
seek one to allure them and bring them back and in our next hour I hope I get I don't know how far I'm going to get but he is going to lure them back into his fellowship he hardened them he blinded them but he's going to bring them back in even when they don't want to Verse six, uh, uh, chapter chapter two, and verse fourteen. Did I read chapter two, verse fourteen? Do no. what you do. Or how about verse sixteen, Bill? Verse sixteen. Uh huh. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Balak. That day is going to come. Mark it. Underline it. That day is not here yet. But that day is coming. Even as Hosea was commanded by God in chapter 3 in verse 1, Go show love to your wife again, though she is loved by others and in an adulteress. And all this was simultaneously aimed at the physical and the spiritual history of Israel. For as God commanded Hosea's name, he named his children Jezariah, which means God will scatter, and I can't pronounce his last name, his second son, Lo, R-U-H-A-M-A-H, meaning not pity. And he named the other one Lo, A-M-M-I, not my people. And only the unyielding love of God could reverse the judgment on that generation. For there was a day coming, in accordance with the ancient promise, the people would be immutable as the sand on the seashore. In that day, Israel would be sown by God and, to call, and be called my people and son of the living. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Hosea, I mean, God's love would remain true in spite of Israel's unfaithfulness and even after the appropriate discipline she would be troth again to him and such love went back to God's Deliverance the nation out of Egypt for 400 years. They did not serve God for 400 years. And they really did not want to leave Egypt. But God said, if I don't get you out of Egypt, they didn't want to leave Egypt. They would have stayed in Egypt and, and, and died in Egypt rather than come out of the wilderness and spend 40 years in the wilderness and not obey God. You know why God had to get him out of Egypt? Guess who was going to come from Israel? His son. Yeah. If he had not got them out of Egypt and got him in the wilderness, the Son of God would not have ever been born because he said he would be born this, 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 and this, and it had to be that way. Exactly. We said, well, God can't 